Shut up and sit down. Welcome to the Big Blue Offensive Podcast with Mike Trainer, Jay Jules, and John Deepak. <laughs> Hey, what's up, Giants fam? Welcome to the Big Blue Offensive Podcast. You know us. I'm Mike. That's Jules. That's Sean. Come follow us at the BBLNYG Podcast. Like and subscribe, all your platforms. Listen to the commercial break so we all get paid. (laughs) Um, Welcome. Welcome, man. Uh, Jules, what topics do we got to discuss this week? Oh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm so, like, disgusted by the last, like, seven days of Giants football that I'm just willing to just dive into it. Fuck oh, how your weekends God. were. Fuck how your meetings were. All right? like, <laughs> fuck all that other bullshit. Like, we need to address shit. We need to address it immediately, all right? So we're going to talk about that fucking preseason bullshit game that we had. All these different fucking trades that have been going on over the last 48 hours, in addition to some players that have just been straight up MIA for fucking camp. And I don't know how many more D-backs we're going to add because I think we got... When we go, we go down like from the eighty-five man roster down to fifty. I think we'd have to call oh, like twenty God. fucking D backs, bro. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, yo, I, I just want to hear you go into the game, man. You like you got you piqued my interest, man. I want to hear your your thoughts on the the preseason game between the Giants and the Jets this past E minus. <laughs> I saw absolutely nothing that was encouraging. That was in a positive direction. Oh, I see absolutely one. nothing. We looked like absolute dog shit. The offensive line couldn't block. They allowed five sacks and a safety. Okay. We scored seven fucking points. Granted, fine. You want to tell me that some of the playmakers weren't on the field? Get them on the fucking field because you can't keep rolling out seven fucking points. All right. You got an offensive line. Fine. I understand Lemieux wasn't fucking there and his, his position and his filling got beat up a little bit. Fine. But I also saw. I also saw my guys, Pert and Thomas, both get beat. So on end of rounds, and they weren't looking fucking so great or fantastic there, okay? And that's going to get into some shit later on with some of these, you know, first and third round picks of your of your ghetto god. And you know what? Some of this shit ain't looking right, man. And I'm going to tell you that, you know, from last year to this year, bro, like, I, I am definitely not a happy camper, but I'm not going to continue ranting and raving to start the show. So I'm going to pass it off to one of you guys. D minus so far, and I got more shit to say. Well, Jules, hold on. Like, I, I want to hear what, like, do you have, like, one good thing to say about the game? I want Give me one good thing you've seen. Or do you not see Ojolari and a couple other guys on the defense was solid, but I expected that. That's what I've been preaching about. You know, like, these are my dudes, all right? So, like, to see them play well and, and step up, good. Other than that, D minus, bro. Like, fine. I'll give my defense a, a, a B minus. Right. So we'll go from a D to a B for them. Okay. Just because they still gave up 10 points. They still made Zach Wilson look all right. Granted, I understand not everyone was playing. I know Martinez didn't play and all that other shit. So there was definitely some key guys out. So I get it. But yo, we can't be relying on them to fucking put up points for us and like hold opponents to fucking under 10 points every fucking game. I am so disrupted with this fucking offense. This yeah. offense looks like dog shit. It looks exactly the same as it was last year. I don't see any fucking improvements. Where's Galladay? Who the fuck knows? He's probably jerking off with Tony because that guy went fucking MIA again, too. So we're going to have fucking John Ross and fucking Slayton as our receivers this year. Like, it's a joke, bro. Like, absolute fucking joke, all right? Coming out like hot. I, said, I got more about those assholes in a minute. John, what do you think, man? <laughs> I just want to know what insurance Jules has because I have to make sure my therapy practice takes his coverage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this he's probably got like three on deck. At least. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So if you were going to grade the players that were out there, sure, you could use any of those grades. But the reality is at least half of the guys that played – aren't going to be on the team next week or in, in two weeks when we, when we make our uh, cut down to the 55. <clears throat> Some so, aren't <laughs> already. <laughs> Some aren't already. Like, yeah, I mean, that whole yeah. offensive line was pretty much a starting unit. So, you know. Well, here's the thing. They played two drives together, I believe. And yeah. other than the Matt Pert uh, on the first drive where he let up the sack on third down, which was like, you know, obviously a big play. Um, other than that, the, the line blocked – Okay, there was no issues at all. Um, Andrew Thomas, he had 11 pass set, uh, pass reps, pass blocking reps. 
and did a lot of pressure. So I don't know. I thought yeah. he let him one. I thought no, he I let him one. No, yeah. he didn't get beat. Did. Yeah, like Jules, like I was gonna say before, I was like, I don't remember him getting beat. Yeah, he, he I, thought, I thought beat. Thomas let up one pressure, but I, I could be wrong with that. I mean, of course, we know it was part. I mean, that was blatantly obvious to go three oh, yeah. in the game. And, and, and like was, he looked like he just didn't know what he was fucking doing, which that is worries me. Scary. That worries me with him. It does wait because he's so big when you got like a speedy guy, smaller guy coming off the edge. He could get beat going around, and that's exactly what happened. So, but you know, I, I think he'll be better prepared for it. You know, next next week maybe. I don't know. Like, yeah, I mean, I, like you guys, yeah. you guys were saying like the offensive line. Like, I thought the offensive line starters played very very good. I thought they were fantastic. I think that's the reason why we didn't trade or draft like a, a left guard. You know, to start. You know, this past draft. I mean. The offensive side, I wanted to see Shane in there at left guard, obviously, because Wiggins just, I mean, there was one play he looked pathetic. He just, like, kind of waved at the guy as he went right by him. I'm like, yo, Wiggins, like, can you, like, at least fucking karate chop him or fucking trip him or some shit? It was pretty fucking pathetic. I, and I was that was my guy that I was looking in the game. I was like, I was looking forward to watching him to see how well he could do. Uh, I thought he maybe be, like, one of the subs to come in if, you know, guy needs a breather or whatever, or some injury happens, but man, he looked fucking terrible, man. It was bad. Listen, most teams don't have as many quality starters as they would like to have to begin with. So to, to think that it's just going to be easy to have, you know, starting caliber second and third string players on the offensive line is just, it's just not the NFL. It's not going to happen. You're going to have guys that, what you're hoping for is a couple of really good offensive linemen, a couple of serviceable offensive linemen, and a good offensive lineman. You can have that. Usually, if you get a guy that goes down and you have to put a replacement player in for a little while, you're going to be okay. It's it's when you have bad offensive linemen, bad offensive linemen, okay offensive yeah. linemen, okay offensive linemen. And then one of those guys goes down, you have a replacement play, level player. There's no strength anywhere else. To carry that offensive line forward, that's a lot the with the NFL. That's a lot of NFL teams, though, John. Yeah, they, need, they need backups. It's like everybody. There's like four good offensive lines in the NFL, and everybody else is okay, right or bad. That's it. Yeah. That's all there is. But it's and, it's just okay. weird. Like online, like they were knocking the offensive line. They were so worried about it. I'm like, yo, they play good. Like Hernandez came out and played fantastic. Bro, Mullen guys knocking people right. over back to back plays, like. Pert had uh, or, or Andrew Thomas had that fucking sick pancake on whoever it yeah. was knocked him threw him right to the ground like a child. He's still there. <laughs> He's still on the ground. <laughs> they didn't get up yet. <laughs> I'm just saying, I, I, Jules. I think I think you, if you look at the game in totality, it's it's hard to like come up with really positive things. But if you look at the guys who actually matter, I think they played well, and there were some bright spots. I think you saw David Sills make a few good plays. You know, not even just the plays that he made, but the plays that he forced the defense into making mistakes to get to get penalties. And then also Carter Coughlin. You know, Tom Coughlin's fucking grandson. He's he's <laughs> running around out there making plays all over the place. <laughs> he's not actually, but you know, we we can <laughs> fantasize. Um, but there, there, I think there's a lot of good stuff to go around. I mean, yeah. look, you, would you rather see them go, you know, put up 38 and hold them to Four. seven? Sure. Yeah, but, but even if they did, even if we went... You can know, we score 17, 14? <laughs> I mean, come on, bro. Seven? Hey, it was Mike Glenn. Jets? Jules, it was Mike Glenn. Yeah. He was going against the Jets defensive front. They're good. Oh, Jets defensive yeah. front is good. Oh, like, I, I, hate, oh, it's, I, listen, I hate saying it, but they're good. They're talented. They're going to give Carolina week one fits. Yeah, until Carolina, Carolina throws offense, a fucking like, 45 on them because Christian McCaffrey has, like, seven touchdowns and shit. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, no, like, like, until then. Sure. But let, let, let's just take this real quick, quick question out here, right? If it wasn't for my man, Old Jalari, School, and Becton, who, who looked better on that field that night? Becton or Thomas? And that's a fucking ongoing issue that we could have took Worfs. We could have took Becton. We could have took any other tackle, and we took who we took. So there's a lot of pressure on Thomas. It's not like Thomas needs to just be – a, a very good left tackle. He needs to be one of the better ones. He needs to be right up there that's almost a in a Pro Bowl type caliber every single season. Perts the guy that's more of the he just needs to be good. He yeah, needs to be yeah, a little yeah. bit above average. Thomas is supposed yeah. to be a fucking beast, and I don't see that yet. Now, I'm not saying that it's not to come. I'm not saying he can't develop. I can't say that he's not still getting used to like playing on the ankle and all this shit. I can't say that that's not some of it. But if this dude's not beasting, what the I, fuck I, are we doing? 
I seen what it on, on on I seen it on Saturday. I thought he was fucking beasting out. I mean, Hernandez kind of took the spotlight off him, but yeah. you don't hear you don't hear anything come from his side, from Andrew Thomas's side. That's that's a mark of a fucking pro bowler right there. We'll that's see. I don't know. I, I, I'm still I'm still not 100 percent like convinced and comfortable that he was the best tackle taken and that we we like that's this guy is our left tackle for the future. Listen, I, I don't, I don't know, man. He had a few bad games last year, a few bad plays that really stuck out, and half of the year he played well. I, I don't know. I, he didn't. I think he didn't let up a sack from like week eight all the way to the Arizona game when Daniel Jones played on two injured legs. I, I mean, what more could you ask for out of the player? He's was the fourth best uh, run blocking offensive tackle in that National Football League last year, and he didn't let up a sack for half the season. I mean, I don't And your rookie year on a bum ankle with no off season with Will Hernandez having COVID <clears throat> and Shane Lemieux sucking balls all over the place. It's next to you. I, I mean, I, I get that people want to, you know, throw this media narrative out there or Tristan Wirfs. He's out there fucking molesting. I, I don't, I don't really care about all that. I'm talking about Andrew Thomas is like, I don't think he was as bad as people are making it out to be. And I think because there was seven and a half months in between football, the narrative just grew and grew and grew and grew and grew. Probably. The point now where we're all of a sudden back to square one where we have this awful, atrocious offensive line with no talent. And that's just simply not the yeah. case. No, it's, it's just not. not. Hey, listen, not they, the weren't, they weren't as bad as the fucking quarterbacks we had. Oh, <laughs> like, listen. I mean, that was just a joke. <laughs> I mean, Jesus. I mean, I, I could have went out there and throw better passes than fucking Dortson. I mean, some of the throws were just like almost like in the stands. I was like, I mean, I was surprised they didn't cut him like midway through that fucking game. I, I didn't. I, I, I was. I, I thought it was nice. Like, for it, like, to, like, like five minutes into the fourth quarter, they run on the field like, bro, you're cut. You're cut already. Yeah. You need to just bounce. Like, <laughs> Give somebody else the jersey, like anybody else, somebody in the stand, like make it a contest that they can win. They could come down and quarterback the fourth quarter, the fucking ferocious display on offensive quarterbacks. I'm like, so now, like, I know you guys will we'll get it into more of that fucking quarterback situation. But I want uh, the reason I bring this up, because now there's rumors going around because Josh Rosen got cut oh and God. the San Fran 49ers because he's behind like, you know, Garoppolo, Lance, or whatever. So you didn't no really shot no. he can't even get he can't even get reps. But I tell you, man, the more I think about it, you know, I know Giant fans like, oh, we gotta get him, we gotta get him. Me is because as soon as somebody's like, you know, dropped or whatever, everybody fucking goes nuts. We gotta get him in a giant uniform. But actually, kind of like the way I look at our quarterback room, I wouldn't mind Josh Rosen coming here, but but I think I would be wrong. And saying that because I don't think he fits the fucking culture. Josh Rosen's kind of a dick. Right. And that's just like my my only reason. If he was a nice guy or whatever, I didn't care about the storyline. All the Giants could have drafted Rosen back in the day. They didn't they need to draft, you know, Jones at six. I don't care about that storyline. If Josh Rosen was a good guy, I'd have him here getting some reps and throwing the ball. And maybe he could become a backup, man. You never know. I mean, look. There's a reason why Josh Rosen now is off of his third team in almost as many years. You know what I mean? Like yeah. there's something either he just doesn't have it. He's not an NFL quality quarterback. He's missing Double. something. Is that leadership? Who knows what it is? But you're kind of right, Mike. Like I agree with you there, right? Like you don't want to bring that sort of attitude to the to the to the club. You know, the one of the things, one of the one of the reasons that I heard that he was cut from the 49ers was that he was complaining he wasn't getting enough reps in practice. Right. It's like, bro, you're the third string quarterback. Like they just went and traded up and gave away like their their future for fucking Trey Lance. Where do you think you stand, bro? You're at best a backup and maybe Garoppolo lands somewhere else and you could back him up. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like your future ain't bright here, dude. <laughs> you know, like I don't know what he's thinking. But, yeah, I mean, look, it, it definitely goes to show you that, uh, you know, certain times it is about chemistry and, and getting the right personnel into the into the field, on the field. And that's probably part of the reason why we didn't look for Josh Rosen or probably will not. We'll, we'll keep going with these other clowns that fuck it for third string, you know? <laughs> there, there's no way, man. The specific stuff that, you know, the cons against drafting Rosen and since he's been in the league, what people say about him, about his work ethic – his sense of entitlement and his attitude and all that stuff. Literally, I mean, could I have said three specific character traits that were more like cardinal sins against Joe Judge's program? I don't think so. 
that, the, that might be like your holy trinity of fucking the wrong personality traits to have on mm-hmm. a Joe Judge team. So plus maybe he's gonna probably get a, a, a you know a job somewhere else because when you're a first round pick, you do get the benefit of the doubt for a lot longer than you're supposed to, unless you were drafted by the New York Giants. Um, <laughs> we don't need but, <laughs> we don't need him anyway, John. You know what I mean? Because nah, you know who we nah, got what is he gonna do? You he's know who we make got sure that fucking Jones's jock shop is on straight. Like, what is he gonna do for him? No, we, we, we got a guy. We got a guy named Brian Lewerke. He followed the BBO NYG yeah, podcast that's right. on Twitter. Big shout today. out there, baby. So <laughs> if he's following us, man, you guys got to follow. We got a backup Giants quarterback that's yeah. probably going to fall to number two eventually because Mike Glennon's garbage. So I'm sorry. Like, I don't like to say bad things about my players, but I've seen a lot of Mike Glennon in my life. I bet on Mike Glennon a lot of my life, and I lost on Mike Glennon a lot of my life. <laughs> So that's it. We have a little history there, me and him. Um, but yeah, like, like I would say, like, you know, maybe like maybe one of these guys like steps up and, and gets that job. I'm like, who knows, man? But that's what the preseason is for, man. So I can't wait to watch him and see what uh see what he does. Definitely. That's about that's about the brightest note that I'm going to agree with in tonight's fucking podcast. For sure, all right? I knew you'd come around. Really? A little bit. <laughs> Jules, you didn't get excited watching. Uh, David Sills out there for the first time, like really getting to see him work. He looked good and making plays. Yo, no, no, I'm gonna tell you straight up why not because this wow. is supposed to be our fifth fucking receiver this year. Am I wrong by saying this? He's supposed yeah. to be wide receiver five. I'm right. not getting excited yes. about fucking wide receiver five. No, I need to see one through four on that fucking field first. And yeah, then knowing that those dudes are doing their job, those dudes are healthy, those dudes are making plays. And then we got a wide receiver five like that. Yeah, no fucking doubt. But I'm starting to get nervous. You see, you guys are missing this point here. Is it Tony? We don't have Galladay on the fucking field yet. Tony, I don't know what's up with this kid. You want me to rant my fucking Tony rant? I'll fucking rant no, no, Tony hold, rant hold, right hold. now. Or do you want me to hold it for commercial? Because you tell me, because I got the Tony Rand fucking sword up. Bro, it's coming back to that draft night. How fucking yeah. pissed was I about it draft night? And here we are, what? April, May, June, July, August. And this kid hasn't shown me shit. He can't stay on the fucking field. He had cleat injuries. He had a cleat issue, right? That, that's what he missing. Then he got to make sure he signed this fucking contract before he was doing OTAs. Then he fucking can't do Fan Fest. Everybody's happy about Fan Fest. Even Barkley was on the fucking field, not 100%. This kid can't even come on the fucking field for Fan Fest. He's got this undisclosed injury now. He doesn't play in a preseason. Yo, get the fuck out of here, bro. Like, this is starting to look like a fucking boss, man. The kid's falling behind. He oh can't get goodness. on the field and stay healthy. He's going to be a Devin Hester, bro. Hopefully, he can fucking return kicks and be explosive on special teams. Since that's what we're fucking going after. We're picking up fucking corners for special teams. Let's go crazy on special teams. We just drafted a first-round pick that's going to be a great special teams player. That is – it is concerning, Jules. I, I give it to you. But, like, I understand your point, Jules, but I understand, like, I want some optimism. So that's why I'm going to go to John, man. John, <laughs> help Jules off his ledge. <laughs> Dude, if you would have – if we would have had this podcast going when in Odell's first camp, you would have been saying exactly the same thing. Probably. Yeah. I hate Odell as much as anybody else that wears a fucking blue shirt on Sundays. Um but the fact is, the first four or five years that he was three or four years, whatever it was that he was here, he was, if not the, he was one of the top three best receivers in football. And if you would have used the first training camp as a barometer of future success, he would have never been rookie of the year. He would have never had 1,300 plus yard seasons. He would have never been on the cover of Madden. Any of those things wouldn't have happened. So all we got to do is just remember where we are on the calendar and also consider that we don't fucking need him. We don't need him right now. If he didn't get on the field all the way to like week eight, week not week nine, we could still go six and two, seven and three and run something in that, in that range there without him. Okay. So let the guy fucking get healthy, whatever, whatever needs to happen with that. You don't know if, if it's a minor injury, a major injury, he did have COVID. Who fucking knows what it is? Joe Judge was in the room drafting him. So obviously he felt strong enough about it to have him. So I don't think it's it's just not important right now. We need so, we, so, we, so, we, so we definitely need 
we need to get him on the field, though. He needs to practice because, you know, it's be, what you do in practice, you do in a game. Somebody told me that famous linebacker day. It might have been my dad or my brother-in-law when they coached us in basketball. Um, <laughs> what you do in practice, you do in the game. So I want to see these guys fucking practice. I mean, Sills came out there. He had some nice fucking moves, man. He had some nifty fucking moves. He reminds me like like a like remember when Ed McCaffrey came out back in the day? He kind of like surprised a lot of people. I know a lot, a lot of people like bring up Victor Cruz. That was the most recent. Decent, but he, he he's like he got a nifty little game to him. He just don't play a lot on special teams, if at all. And I know CJ Board had a good game on special teams, but he had a big drop as being a wide receiver. So I think that's why the moves that were made, a couple of trades to get some defensive backs. We'll get into that after this commercial break. But I think that's the reason why CJ Board might be on the cut list pretty soon. But let's take that quick break and we'll talk more about that two trades that went down recently. We'll be back on the MY BBO NYG podcast. All right, we are back with the BBO NYG podcast. Now there's two transactions, guys. What happened? There was two trades, right? Two trades. But real quick, I just wanted to kind of finish and sort of uh, you know, have my rebuttal to the last thing that John had said. So I now have to be comfortable with the fact that two out of my first four, my two out of the last four first round picks are not going to be 100 percent or on the field for week one. I got to be OK with that. Right. Why? Why? Well, what, because Barkley, we don't know that? yet. Barkley's still running around in a fucking in a quarterback red jersey. So he's not getting any kind of contact. We know he's not playing a whole fucking preseason. So how much how much is he really going to play against Denver, dude? Let's be real. Like, you're not just going to throw him into the Wolves, man. He's going to come in. He's going to get worked in. It's going to be a lot of Booker, probably even some Clement. Like, that's what we're going to have to accept for week one against Denver. And now you're going to tell me this fucking kid, Tony, is a head case? He can't get on the fucking field. He can't get shit straight in his head. And like, yo, and then and then Andrew Thomas, we just spoke about earlier. So, bro, what are we doing? And then, and then Daniel Jones is the other one who's literally on the hot seat this year. It's make a break for him. So, like, bro, you're talking about all the fucking first four round picks for the New York Giants are in question, are in fucking serious question, man. And that's not They're something actually you feel not, comfortable though. about going into preseason. They're not in serious question. <clears throat> the only people questioning it are fans who don't understand. Literally. Man, how many can question Tony? What? Like, if you look at Tony in comparison to Old Jalari, they're like polar opposites. Old Jalari gets it. He doesn't say a fucking word. He shows up to practice. The dude is out there fucking busting his ass. He's making improvements. He's in the film room. You don't fucking hear a thing. Just like a true fucking top rookie is going to be. That dude's going to start. He's going to be the man on that outside linebacker position in that 3-4 set. He's going to probably be our rookie of the fucking year. There ain't no doubt in my mind. He could probably win defensive rookie. I'm not behind him. And then you take a guy like Tony who, you know what, He there was other receivers that went after him that I thought were better receivers, all right? And now we have this kid because he's supposed to be dynamic and his playmaking and this shit, and he has a fucking even, like, I haven't even seen a highlight of him yet. Like, bro, it's whack, dude. The only highlights I see are fucking Florida Gator highlights. Like, I'm pissed off. And then we waste that pick on Aaron Robinson to go out and get all these moves that we're about to talk about. What the fuck was the point of trading up in the third round to get Aaron Robinson if we're still picking up fucking guys in the secondary, two of them, in back-to-back days? All right. In the middle of August, like, bro, that doesn't make sense. This draft is starting. And now I can see where some of this criticism comes into play with your boy Gettleman. All right. And I get it. There's a lot of fucking things that are out there where we're going to have to see more than just one person step up. And that shit does concern me. Jules is fired up tonight. Woo. Yeah, man, this, this kid, bro, you must have just stayed on the Giants beat writers and just read all their articles. <laughs> I haven't heard an original thought at all. All I've heard is is media, literally, like media clickbait just regurgitated. They control the media. They write what stories you want to fucking hear. So them talking about Ojolari, they want you to they want they want you to know about Ojolari. They also want to make them look bad for drafting Tony, so you don't hear shit. But Judge has talked about Tony several times. How he is in meetings, how he's participating, how he's doing this, and how he's doing that. So it, it, did you listen to the conference? Did you listen to the press conferences? I was gonna say, but, really judge, but judge, judge handled that shit like I thought he would, and very fucking Bill Belichick, Nick Saban esque in the way he was answering those questions. He said everything that you'd want to hear. He's an 
always super positive dude, which is awesome. And you like that about your head coach, right? So I got nothing bad to say about Judge. But, you know, he answered that shit like, like textbook, man. It was all political. It was all fucking, you know, yeah, these guys are good. They're this, they're that. Everything was right. It was all positive shit, all the type of stuff you want to hear. He's not, he's a, he's smart with that kind of stuff. He knows how to work the media. I'll give him that. He's fucking awesome with that. Not everyone could do that. I mean, you look at, you look at McAdoo. He was like a fucking retard with the media. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, Judge knows how to like take control of a room. He, he's a leader. You know, like I got nothing bad to say about him. But it, it is concerning when our, our big free agent transaction hasn't fucking really gotten together with fucking Daniel Jones yet. It is a problem when, when your number one draft pick who's supposed to be this playmaker can't even fucking stay on the field. It is a problem all right, when you're all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. That's all my right. concern. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. You, right. you can't just go we away. need to see one hell of an improvement on Sunday. Because if not, bro, it, it, I'm catching too many flashbacks from 2020. I, I, I'm not that concerned over the preseason game. It's just yeah, more man. of like a glorified crazy, TV man. practice know, to, to, to me. But I get like when you don't see the people practicing and shit like that, that gets on my nerves too because it's important. But yeah. anyway, like let's talk about the two transactions that went down to tie, tie it in. Like so that we, we traded for two defensive guys. We first uh, trade, we traded for Keon Crozen for like uh, I believe a seven, a six round pick. Um, 2023. Yep. In 2023, he's just like a, a great special teams player. Um, pretty much the number one guy that that was in uh, New England with uh, with Judge. You know, Judge, he loved him. And then another trade, we traded Isaac Yadam. You know, he don't play that press man coverage that great. So we trade him to the Packers for Josh Jackson, which is another cornerback that does play that man press pretty well. And he has a relationship with our defensive coordinator. So... I think that tied into that kind of trade. And he also plays special teams. So maybe like, you know, one of those wide receivers like CJ board done because of that, that move. Cause CJ board went out there, he dropped like a, an easy pass. He was dropping some passes last year. I understand he's good on special teams, but I think he's next in line to, to go. what you guys think about the trade? Do you, do you like him? Do you even care? I don't care literally at all. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's bottom of the roster, guys. It's not even newsworthy. It's six round. Pick. No, it, it, it's just it's just interesting because you mentioned I didn't realize that that Josh Jackson had a connection with Pat Graham, and that he's an actual better press defender corner. That's that is that makes sense. I could see why we did the swap because obviously they'll use the eight of them in a, in a different type of setting, and, it, and it'll just work out better for both teams. Probably. And then of course, Crossing had the connection with Joe Judge in New England. He actually won a couple Super Bowls, or at least the Super Bowl there. So the guy's got some winning experience. He knows how to bring it in. Like you said, he's going to he's gonna play special teams. Like, yeah. Crosser was brought in to play special teams. It's a little odd to maybe trade a future sixth-round pick for him. I, you know, I don't really know. Right. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't even know. I'm just saying. I know, you know, I, I know that was a question mark there for that. But, I, you know, I don't see that being an issue. It's special a teams hurt us, though. Two years special, now. special teams hurt us, though. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I, I agree. You know, like, that, the, the trades – I think, I think, like I said, they're going to be useful. It's just a little weird because we continuously keep adding these D-backs and D-backs and D-backs. So it's just like a matter of, uh, you know, I don't know how many D-backs are on the roster currently, but, like, damn. Like, like you're talking wide receivers, D-backs are going to get fucking cut, too, because I feel like out of the 80 men, 40 of them, 20 of them are wide receivers, the other 20 are D-backs. You, know I mean? you can't have enough of them, man. You can't have enough. Like, damn. But, you know, listen, like, they made other moves. Like, they released out for Morris. You know, shout out to him. Thanks for being a giant with us. But I like the team, like, not standing pat. I like them making moves. I like the coaching staff. We're like, hey. We could get somebody better here to 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 do this job or whatever, and I don't think we had that great attention to detail in previous regimes. So I'm happy to see that back in in that building. So it looks like, um, you know, let's see how the moves pay off. I like one. I will. I will bring up a positive note so that that John doesn't go crazy and fucking want to jump through the screen and shit and choke me out. But <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I <clears throat> John Mara. Did come out today and say that he he feels that this team is moving in the right direction and that this should definitely be a playoff team, if not this year, like next year, the latest, like that, that we should really be back to being considered Super Bowl contenders and he likes the way the team is going. So, look, if the boss is fucking saying that, you could fuck all the beat writers, you could fuck my emotional fucking state coming at him because I just fucking was so mad on Saturday, all right? And you could put that shit to bed because the boss... 
it said that the team's moving in the right direction. At the end of the day, that's the motherfucker that signs the checks. That's the dude that gives the okay. That's the dude that brings in these fucking people. So if he's all right, how the fuck am I not? <laughs> he says that every year. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 he says the same thing every year. It's, he's like a robot. Yeah, he says the same thing every year. You know, hopefully at the end of this year, he says, you know, you know, Giants fans, this is for you. It looks like he did in 2007. Word up. Um, you know what I'm saying? For for the for the boomers out there, you know. Let's um, hope that happens. Yeah. Uh, but I, I don't know, man. I just don't understand you get so worked up about a preseason game like that. I tried you know, not to, man, but it was just sitting there and and, and like it didn't I seem like you tried at all. Actually. Like it trapped, like we're in the same type of fucking basic shit that we were in last year, and I don't see any improvements. And then it's frustrating. Yeah, can't see like if Gallaudet, right if Gallaudet would have just made a couple of plays in practice. You know what I mean? If I would have saw Tony break a fucking play in practice, and again, yeah, we're talking practice. I'll do the Allen yeah, Iverson practice, practice, but you know, like <laughs> practice. Yo, I get it. Why like, you just want to see these guys? You want to get excited? Like McKinney, I got to see a little bit of so far, and I got excited. Old Jalari, who I'm huge on, look great, man. The guy, you know, it's something to be excited about. When your offense has been lacking, you're the laughing stock of the NFL. That the offense just keeps getting fucking played and and embarrassed and like made fun of. Bro, I don't want to go out and see a fucking bullshit fourth quarter touchdown and we almost got shut up by the Jets and none of my playmakers on the fucking field. Like that's yeah, man bro, frustrating crazy. and that's what a lot of that came crazy from. Crazy right now. I uh, left. I left during the game. Oh, man. So listen, oh. listen, listen. I think Joe Judge told you his intentions going into this game. We wanted to see the offense. We wanted to see the starters on the field for a drive or two. But we knew even asking that was asking a lot, right? So, True. oh, boy. Are you still pausing the Yankee game? Yeah, I don't want to know. <laughs> I don't want to know. I don't say anything. Um, <laughs> <laughs> much should have thought, though. Um, it's just – it's it's preseason, man. It's, it's so – irrelevant practice none of that stuff fucking i mean it matters to practice but what you're seeing in fucking youtube clips what you're seeing the beat the beat like they're not watching full practices that don't they only get like a few minutes is it like 15 20 minutes on the other side of the facility to look through fucking binoculars at and that's what the the (laughs) stories are about i got a question for jules though it's it's like peeping tom status is what you're basically getting a report of i don't know man this this there's so much to be excited about right now that a dry run fucking preseason game in which he told you that most of the players weren't going to be playing anyways before we went into the game to even go into it thinking that we're going to see, you know, all these players on the field slinging fucking passes and diving into the playbook in a preseason game just to kind of satiate impatient fans. That's silly, man. You need to blow your load in the preseason. Risk Seven the points in the fourth quarter, bro. Like Who other teams cares? scored. Oh, the team scored. Even New England put up like fucking Who nineteen cares, points, though. man. Like, Yo, do you score. do you even do you even recall like a preseason game from any years in the past? No, Spe- specifically like when they won the Super Bowl. Do you remember any of the preseason games then? No, I mean, I, I remember, of course, the one that I had gone to that year. <laughs> I, I, I do like, remember. Like that, yeah, you know see, I, mean? I remember yeah. one when Seahorn got hurt because I was like, no, well, that's do not have him run punt returns. He's our best corner. And yeah, I remember Daniel up. Jones' first preseason game. Yeah, where he went like five for five, but it's that was not. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, and, that's, I, and that's I remember, I remember ago. Barkley's first preseason game. He had that big run down the sideline. Yeah, and then they kind of yanked him out immediately and shit. You know, like that's it. That's so all you remember that's the all. good points. We see. That's what I'm trying to say. There was those good points, right? And we kept saying their first game, their first game, their first game. Well, I need to fucking see Tony on the fucking field, man. Like, like because I, I did How see, I it? did see guys like Moore and Mathis Jr. and guys that I liked a lot more receiver look oh, fucking fantastic oh, for their team, making nice plays. Even a Moss St. Brown looked better. Like, dude, I want to just see my guy on the field. You know what That's I'm saying? Well, do something in practice. I don't want to see this kid running around barefoot because he can't find a fucking cleat that fits him right. Like, give me a break, bro. This is like a all joke. Right, all right. First of all, that that shit. These kids are showing up. They they don't have to bring their own cleats to fucking training camp, right? Does don't they have an equipment staff that fucking has all the shit and it's they just put food. it on the right, right? <clears throat> yep. Like are these guys going to yeah. Odell's to buy football cleats before they go to fucking practice? <laughs> I hope they do it high school and shit. I feel like they have a fucking <laughs> Foot Locker underneath the stadium that they just fucking pick whatever the fuck they want. Anyways, 
they're getting allowance from their parents saying. first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I hear what you're saying, but it's like yelling at a you know at the fucking screen in the movie saying, "Oh, I want to see more Iron Man. I don't want to see fucking you know the Hulk." Like it doesn't matter. When we get to real fucking games, when we get to real games, as long as they fucking win, you won't care at all if Tony is isn't on the field for both games or practice. If they're fucking throwing up W's and on Sunday nights we're recording podcasts, fucking yelling and screaming about how we fucking slapped Washington, <laughs> how we fucking killed overrated orange. That's all we, we fucking care about. And with or without Tony, with or without any individual player, not named fucking Daniel Jones or Saquon Barkley, we're going to be fucking going to that place and we're going to be able to have fucking fun with these seasons. I yeah, see you both your DM, points. But it's really not that big of a deal. What? I see both your points. I see where you're coming from, John. I see where you're coming from, Jules. Like, Jules, I understand. Like, you want to see these guys. It's important because, you know, you want to see how they are. John, I understand because preseason is just fucking totally stupid <laughs> and it's pointless and nobody should play it. But like also too, it's like, yo man, we got a couple of nice shiny convertibles. Right. And instead of me being able to take it for a ride, I got to go, no, no, you know what? It's only, it's only May. It's not quite the summer yet. So there's no reason to be driving out the convertible when the summer hits in the middle of June. You drop down a convertible, the car's going to drive just great because, you know, it don't matter. Like, you don't, you don't have to get a feel for the car. You don't have to do nothing. Like, yo, that's bullshit. You know, as any individual, I don't give a shit how much you drive. If you literally switch up your car, like you go from driving a truck to like maybe say like an Accord or some shit, right? When you go into that in those two cars, you're going to feel a little different for a second unless you're driving both of those cars every other day, every week, right? Oh, yeah. So don't even sit there and tell me, it's the same shit. Bro, like, he doesn't have chemistry with Galladay just yet. He, he can get it. I'm not saying it's not going to happen, but he don't have it today, right? And now you got this kid, Tony, who, who like, is a rookie, and Absolutely. he ain't don't even true. know fucking the difference between a run or a pass play. Like, it's ridiculous. Chemistry. Like, yo, that, that just meeting, sucks. Jules. He's there. It's not like the kid's fucking sitting at home, you know, fucking rapping. Like, he's he's at the facility every single day. He's yo, so with- what? Have you ever never just showed up to work and not done anything? And just chill, and you were there. You know what I'm saying? Do you think that that Come on, man, like that shit happens all the time. <laughs> but, yeah, but it depends on the boss. Did you Great. work for Joe Judge in the past? He doesn't seem like the guy who's letting fucking people go and sleep in meetings. Oh, just doesn't hanging out there, hanging out the hallways. <laughs> In college, Especially, I used to look like I paid attention to concerned. everything, bro, in, in class. I would sit there. I look like I was intent to that shit. You write down, like, every, like, tenth word that the professor says, and you're good. He comes <laughs> back. What did I just say? Uh, I don't know. You are talking about fucking World War Three? I don't fucking know, you know? Like, you're good. All he's got to do is be like, oh, you just said, uh, you know, when I'm in the Y fucking slot that I wrote across the middle there on a 10 yard game. Yeah, I'm good. All right. Yeah, I'm paying attention, coach. Thanks. We like, just figured out. On. We just figured out. Jules cheated his entire time of schooling. He just basically took the cliff notes and he bullshitted his way out of fucking work. Maybe. I don't believe that. That's what's going on, man. I don't believe that. I don't think. I have more faith in Joe Judge that he's got. Think about it. This isn't an undrafted rookie free agent who's sitting in the back of the room trying to fucking pick up on everything. Oh no, you're talking cut. about their first round pick. Yeah. And that's concerning to me. You don't think that there's attention from not only Joe Judge, but all the coaches around him? We have a coaching staff of like 30 motherfuckers right now, bro. You have basically one coach per two players. <clears throat> so there's some dude at 1925 Giants way who has to look at him and one other guy. And that's pretty much it. Yeah, well, whoever the chokes is in charge of Tony better get that fucking kid's head on straight. Because here's <laughs> yeah. the thing, right? If this dude could just fucking, like, fly through preseason and, and, and camp and everything like he has, and then he goes out there, maybe week three or four, he makes this spectacular play, and the New York media is all on his shit, and they start blowing him the fuck up, and it's all Dell Beckham 2.0. Is he the type of kid that can handle that kind of shit? Or do we have another fucking Odell on our hands? And I don't want Odell. I don't need Odell 2.0 in this fucking stadium again. Like, I don't want to go through that shit where it's like the ups and downs, the great playmaking, you got already pumped up for a fucking great season, and the kid can't play the whole year. Like, I don't want that, man. I want this guy to be different. I want him to be Kadarius Tony, and he's the fucking player that he is. Not fucking Odell 2.0, and that shit worries me, man. That is what's scaring the shit out of me. And then, look, you can't sleep on... Misery, is it? But you can't How sleep on Galladay's injury history either. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, this guy's He's come over blinders. season where he didn't play. Look at Mike Thomas. Mike Thomas, they were they were fucking with saying he was the next Randy Moss. He's the greatest guy ever. Then he gets hurt and then doesn't have ankle surgery. And all of a sudden he goes crazy and he's Antonio Brown. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, yo, that's how these receivers are, man. They're prima donnas a lot of the time. You don't know what this kid is. You don't know anything he's about because you don't see him. You don't hear him. He doesn't give interviews. He doesn't make plays. He doesn't do shit. He's like he a fucking interviews. wasted pick. He's had multiple interviews. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, the one. I'm I happy to it. be on the team. I'm happy to be on the team. All right, all right, all right. We're doing great. It was great. Yeah. You got pick number one, motherfucker. You got paid. <laughs> yeah. You're happy to be on the fucking team. <laughs> all right. All right, guys. We can continue to beat this dead horse, but we'll let the Giants worry about that week one against the Broncos. So Fair let's enough. take a quick commercial break on the BBL NYG podcast. And I got a topic we'll talk about when we get right back. All right, guys, we are back with the BBO NYG podcast. I'm Mike, that's Jules, that's John. I got a topic, guys. Um, did you see the interview today with Mara coming on, oh, yeah. talking about, like, he because he's part of the, he's like the chairman of the NFL, like with all the rules and regulations. All that he's on the shit. competition committee. Yeah, the competition committee. So he's, like, on board with, like, getting rid of this fucking taunting. And now I've seen people on both sides of the fence. Some people like taunting. They think it makes the game fun. And other people hate it. I'm interested to see, like, what's your guys' opinions on that? Me personally, I mean, at the end of the day, this is an entertainment business. So as long as you're not being, like, disrespectful and stuff, I don't know what the real harm is in it. In it, in it. If it, it's they're focusing on taunting as like an objective, like they were doing the fucking choreographed shit. Like, I don't want my players doing that. I want them focused on fucking winning football games, not about their fucking dance recitals in the end zone after touchdowns. I want them winning games. I don't care. But in, in, in a, a big third down, fucking Shep fucking makes a, you know, converts a third and 12 and fucking spikes the ball afterwards because he's pumped up. I, we're going to get mad. I, I, I don't know. I feel like, what, this is an emotional game and I think sports are more fun when you can see the players hearts in it. You know, that's that. And that's one clear indicator of that is their kind of response in moments. You know, if they're going out of their way to taunt and they're going to guys faces and trying to start problems and stuff, I can see that being a problem and you don't want that part of it. Uh, but just the generic fucking, you know, bullshit like that flag they threw over the weekends, the guy just fucking flips the ball on the ground. Like Jesus Christ. What do you think, Jules? What's so, your opinion on that? I, I've always kind of been conflicted with this issue, right? Like, like I, I, I don't necessarily like the, the touchdown celebrations where, you know, guys are in there and they're doing like something where it's like this fucking act that I got to watch for like 30 <laughs> seconds, you know, where <laughs> somebody's like, you know, shoot each other down and they're rolling a the ball. Into each other. It. <laughs> yeah, like dumb shit like that, bro. Like, yeah. like if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty damn sure the great Barry Sanders said that he never celebrated when he scored a touchdown and he scored plenty in his fucking career. Yeah. And he said, bro, the reason why I don't celebrate and obviously, you know, quote me, but it's pretty damn close. He says, the reason why I don't celebrate is because you act like you do this before. And when you score a touchdown, act like you scored a touchdown before and you scored, you did it for your team. And then you go back over to your team and you let your defense get ready. Something around those lines. That's basically what he said. And I always kind of supported that. Now, look, you make a spectacular catch, you know, you break like an 80 yard run you know, something along those lines, and you get a little crazy, a little happy, you spike the ball in the end zone, you're fucking hugging your plate, your teammates and shit. Yeah, I'm all for that. To me, that ain't taunting. But, like, I get it where they're kind of trying to say that this is kind of getting towards that borderline of taunting. Where the other side of things is, like, I never want to take anything away from the defensive guy. If a defensive guy wants to get in an offensive player's face and talk shit to him, being like, yo, you ain't running on us, you ain't catching that pass, you ain't doing – yo, that's part of the game. Like, yo, if you're like Bradbury or something, y'all, you're locking right. down one of the best receivers in the league. Yo, you can start talking a little shit to, like, DeAndre Hopkins or somebody like that. Like, yo, be like, you ain't doing shit today, bro. I got you locked down. Like, like you know, like, how where are they going to draw the line? You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Like, is it going to be – do I think, like, every time they get a first down and you're losing, like, by 17 <laughs> points, should you throw down the fucking first down sign? No, that's fucking retarded. Look at the scoreboard, bro. You're losing. Yeah, it was a good first down, but, like, get back in the fucking huddle and keep moving the football, you know? Yeah. Or do I think, it, you know, like if, um, you know, like a defensive player, like, you know, pushed the guy, got in his face and like really went at him at the end of a play, that kind of taunting should be allowed. Absolutely not. But shit talking, a little bit of celebrating in the end zone, I've always been all right with. It's just the over the top shit that I think they should limit. 
Yeah, I kind of like agree with that shit. That shit. Like, I don't want to see like nobody like spin in each other's faces over this shit. You know what I mean? Right. Like you could talk shit, taunting. That's fucking fine. You know, don't pull your fucking dick out and slap it on the side of somebody's fucking helmet. You know, don't go over the fucking top. <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe people like these players were getting, maybe they were, you know, doing more like really bad, dirty shit. Like maybe they were talking so much fucking horrible shit that they were like, yeah, we got to cut this out. There's like maybe the language and that fucking taunting is just, setting somebody else off on the other side and causing these fights. But, you know, at the same time, you kind of want to see some kind of emotion. I don't want to see a player like you guys say get penal- penalized. Be- is that the word penalized? Penalized. 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 That's it. I knew I was going to get there with the help. Um, so if they get like that red, you know, white, uh, yellow flag, God, I'm fucking up all over the place. If they get that yellow flag thrown at them, I don't want to see them you know, suffer because they just have like so much emotion and passion for the game. I don't want to see, I, want, I don't want that taken away from the game. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, you don't want guys like not invested in the game either. Like, you know what I mean? You want to like temper animals. Like you want them fucking going, you know, they, you want them to be ferocious. Imagine Jabril Peppers not being able to play at a hundred percent. Like, what, what was the point? like you, you want to fucking see these guys like, you know, be mutants. Well, listen, it's not even like, you know, like how many times has like a big, huge defensive hit or stop pumped up and changed the momentum of a game? You know what yeah. I mean? These guys can't celebrate. They got to like shake each other's hands or walk off the field. I mean, like, that's just say there's got to be like some sort of line thrown where like I get it. If you, you know, maybe you get a first down and you get up, you spike the ball in the fucking defender's face. Cool. Maybe that shouldn't be done. But, yo, if that dude throws the ball back to the ref and he's like, yo, bro, I'm going to do that to you all day. All right. All right. <laughs> now it's he's fucking flipping that shit on the corner. Like, yo, yeah, no doubt, right. baby. He will do that to you all day, bitch. You need to stop his ass. You know what I'm saying? Hey, <laughs> right. for real. That's, yeah. 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 It's football. <laughs> shit. It's fucking yeah, football. You know? Like, because like, I don't want it to, like, turn into, like, the way the NBA has where, you know, it's like if you touch the guy the wrong way and then you look, it's all of a sudden they get, like, seven fucking fouls on them for fucking one thing. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want it to right. get to that extent where, you know, the guy just says something. And because the ref overheard it, he's throwing a 15-yard fucking penalty because that's going to be fucking a joke. I mean, could you imagine on, like, third and four, they stuff the run, and the guy gets up and he says something to the running back, and all of a sudden that's taunting, and he fucking throws a flag, and now it's first and ten. You know what I'm trying to say? Fuck like, that. They got enough flags, Jules. You know they throw enough flags during the game to yeah. stop the game. I don't need any more of that shit. Seriously. Um, unless, like I said, unless it's blatant obvious – like I threw the ball at you or I pushed you or, you know, I'm celebrating like, like I just fucking like it's my birthday and shit. I'm trying to make a TikTok video. You know what I'm trying to say? Like it is, like, if it's not like that over the top, you know, like running in there. Where, where was it? When Zeke Elliott jumped in the fucking thing and was eating the soup. Like, you know, like, what are you going to do? You're yeah. going to take away the Lambo leap? You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Like, that's, it's infamous. like that's a famous thing to do to fucking Lambo leap. What? You're going to take right. that away? That's kind of taunting, right? I mean. So I think they just need to be very specific and, you know, maybe, maybe foul language is part of it. You know, I don't know, but you should still be able to curse a little bit. They're grown fucking men. Like for real, like you can't say the F word or the S word. Like that's ridiculous. Cause you hear that shit all the time getting bleeped out when they're mic'd up. <laughs> you know so like, what's the fucking difference there? <laughs> Dude, so if you're playing a game that people could get paralyzed in, like, yeah, I think they're allowed to fucking uh, say like a little bad word. Yeah. Get a little you know emotional I mean? at times. Like, give me a break. Like, playing a violent fucking game, you know? Yeah. I'm pretty sure I heard, I'm pretty sure I heard Brady on the fucking sidelines a couple of times going, let's fucking go! Right. <laughs> you know? That's fucking Tom Brady. Like, that's, yeah. it sounded exactly like him too right there. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yo, so do you guys have the, the Giants uh, app on your phone? Yes. Yes, yes I do. <laughs> I'm glad you got I it. mean, who does it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if you don't, oh, listen, and you're people, listening, don't make sure your favor and get that fucking app because, like, <laughs> holy fan, shit, you want to talk beat writers, it's like you're there. They even show you photos of practice and shit. <laughs> yeah, they have, like, a phenomenal fucking – the photography department that they have, whoever oh does take the photos, yeah. There's, yeah. Ex- there's, like, posters every single day. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, yeah. yeah. did you get the alert just now for the, the standouts from today's practice? Mm-hmm. I did not. I did not. I shut that off like Mike did. Uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to have too many distractions while we were talking right now. Right. <laughs> so, standouts, standouts from today's practice. I'm going to get to the first one last. There's All three right. other ones. There's David Sills. Another one. Continued his impressive camp. 
Wide receiver and five. No. <laughs> Number one. <laughs> I know, right now he is, right? He's fucking all RW1. <laughs> uh, he showcased his running good. ability and a uh, route running ability, had three touchdowns. Jesus. Sterling Shepard, after catching a few touchdowns, right? Shepard made a play of the day during team period. So Shepard had three. So that's six touchdowns that Jones but Was thrown. Jones throwing all these? Jones right. had nine touchdowns today. Or was it our new boy, Lewicki? <laughs> no. no, no. He, That's he, our he boy. Touchdowns to uh, Sills, Slayton, Shepard, and oh. others, it says here. Um, but I saw that before that oh, he, had, he had thrown nine. No, I saw it on Twitter before. It. I, I was like, all right, well, maybe. I don't know. But Were the Giants defense, defense not allowed, allowed to play? Were <laughs> the Giants the back three yards off the ball? <laughs> yeah. Was, <laughs> what they're saying is that he was just was throwing the ball where only the receivers could catch it, and the receivers were making plays. Okay. He throws dimes. He's, that's why he's got that So name. who was the last name you held off the list? I'm sorry, I missed that. Was it Shepard? It was Slayton, Shepard, and uh, uh, fucking Sills. Slayton, so, Shepard, and Sills, among others, though, it um, says. A bunch of others, nine, yeah. So, yeah, so I guess there was another couple of guys that also threw him, because that wow. counts for seven. Between Sills and Shepard is six, Slayton's one more is seven, and then two more touchdowns to two other guys. I don't, I don't, it doesn't specify who they were. But well, see, this is this that's is against the giant secondary, too, which might be the best one in the league. What did Sandro Plaxenberger do? That's my favorite running back. <laughs> uh, I don't know, it doesn't say anything about him. Him and Gary Bright will play catch. Yeah, he's gonna be, <laughs> yeah. He might, yeah, my man might be in there, dude. He might get, well, listen, he might I mean, get look, the burn. If Sills keeps playing like this, I mean, how is he not wide receiver four, right? And, and possibly sure. even maybe threaten Slayton for three, right? Or some shit okay. like that. Okay. But that's, what, but that's my point. It yeah, just where did, further... where did you do with Jules? Can you bring yeah. Jules back to my podcast, please? <laughs> dude, I, I, his imposter is right I, now. I, dude, I understand <laughs> what he's saying because of right now. He's now he just further playing. pushes Tony down the deck. Tony down the list. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So you have this first round kid. What are you going to do with him, man? If this dude doesn't get into gear within the next week or two, because he needs to, he's not a veteran receiver like Galladay or even Shepard for that matter, right? This kid don't get into gear. He's going to be lost in the sauce and he's going to be forgotten about, man. I'm telling you guys right now, you ain't going to hear about him until October, November. Right? I can see, I can see Slay, Slayton. About. You're funny with Slayton, pick, though. Dude. You're funny with Slayton because I don't, I don't see him overtake Slayton, but if he does overtake Slayton, that just makes it sills that good. You know, if he could overcome him, like, hey, yeah. listen, that's a fucking bonus. But I don't see that happening, you know. But you never know, man. People come out of nowhere. Victor Cruz came out of nowhere. Victor Cruz. You don't know. Like, I don't think he's supplanted and Slayton right now, though. For that matter, Slayton came out of nowhere two years ago. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, he was a six-round pick. We didn't yeah, have him as yeah. a fucking starter that yeah. time. We didn't, he wasn't drafted that way, and he can't step the fuck up. He had a little bit of an off year last year, and we'll see what he does this year. Like, I, I'm not worried about him, but, like, damn, I got well, them three guys penciled year. in as wide receiver one through three. And then, like, I was hoping Tony's going to, like, somehow work his way in there. I mean, so many people are saying Tony's going to be on wide receiver two. We're going to let go hey, of Shepard. I said I'm that. Like, now we ain't doing that shit. You know what I'm I know. saying? Not I know. even fucking close, dude. We might have Sills in there. That's why I'm pissed <laughs> off, too. That's but, why I'm bro, pissed injuries pissed fucking off. happen in football, though, man. Yeah, but this, like, this, this is, is getting a little beyond injury. You yeah, know? it's like, a lot of ain't on the field, bro. Like, and it's an undisclosed type of thing. Like, yeah. yo, he didn't even show up for Fan Fest. Like, what's going on? Like, maybe yeah, he know. isn't paying attention like we think he is in practice. And maybe this is the way they're punishing him and they're just covering it up because that's how they're going to do shit. Right. Because it's weird, man. Like, it doesn't make sense. I like they're like, oh, you know, he tweaked his ankle. He tweaked his hamstring. He'll be fine. A couple of days. They say that about everybody. Yeah, very and strange. This kid is undisclosed. For your rookie yeah. who's already shown weird behavior, and then, and it, then called COVID, and then fucking I forgot to mention the COVID. You know what I'm trying to say? You got a good point, Jules, because today somebody on somebody on said that oh he's like phenomenal in the reading the book in the playbook. So okay. why was why was somebody coming out just to say that? Right. You know, the, it's very strange, man. The whole situation is fucking. It's weird. Like, I need to see Tony on the field within the next couple of weeks doing some shit. I want to report like you just got where Tony, he doesn't have to catch three in a fucking practice, but, like, you know, he had one great touchdown catch. I mean, that's what, that's the main thing you've been hearing about most of these receivers around the league. And look, you can say the same shit uh, about Devonta Smith and all that shit. He ain't off to a great fucking preseason start. And nope. that was a dude I was big on. Do I think he's miserable in Philadelphia? Yes. And do I yep. think it's affecting him a little bit? Yes. 
But you know what? He's got to step up too because, look, he's got to realize he's in the NFL and you don't have to stay in Philly his entire fucking career. But you know what I'm saying? But like, you know, you you want, you yep. just want to hear good things about your guys. Like even Jalen Rager, who was the, the Eagles first round pick last year, he had a big catch in, in, in preseason today, right? He had a big touchdown catch. Fine. That's all he fucking did. He's been lost in the sauce the whole rest of the fucking preseason. But at least you heard that. All I keep hearing about Kadarius Tony is fucking negative bullshit. Nothing. He, he's, he, he, Welcome like nothing, to New nothing. York, bro. Yeah, but like, come on, dude. I, I don't hear that about old Jalari. I've been hearing nothing but great shit about him. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I even heard good things about Ellison Smith, and Ellison Smith's a little banged up. You know what I'm trying to say? They're dying to get him back on the field. So, like, you know, they do say good things about these guys. But when you have a guy that literally, I don't want to say he he looks like Odell Beckham, but, like, he's got that sort of same kind of look to him. You know what I mean? Like, the the way that they they just approach the game and, and their, their flair, you know, that flair, that's kind of the word. You know, and, and that shit worries me, man, because we went through that already. And that was a fucking cancer that I think is part of the reason why the Giants offense has been shitty for the last four seasons. You can go on and make the case that fucking, you know, oh, well, you know, you know, we didn't make the trade or all this shit. You know, things were good. That clubhouse was great until Odell blew up. Let's fucking put it what it is, all right? And they go on that fucking boat in Miami, bro, and shit changed. And the culture needed a Joe Judge to come in, needs a healthy Barkley, needs Daniel Jones to take that next step, and needs other healthy receivers in the fucking playroom for this shit to come on and start working and we can get past that. But if this kid is just like that, man, bro, because here we go again, and and I don't even want this kid on this fucking team, and it's a waste of a first-round pick. All right, Jules, 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 Jules. We're... Two and a half weeks into camp. All right. That's it. Okay. All right. It's two weeks. All right. Take a breath. All right. Let's let this fucking play out. The kid could be back for week one, score two touchdowns, and do that every game for the rest of the year. And we're going to build a statue before you fucking, you fucking have Christmas dinner this year. Yeah. Like, you just, and even more, even more. As upset as you are that you want to see these fucking camp fucking TikTok vids and stuff like that, like I get it. Think of how awesome it is to be in a position right now where we don't even need him on the field to be a successful team. Our first round pick doesn't have to play a snap this year and we can still win 12 games. That's the team that they built. If they can build that team, they can trade away Odell right I mean, listen, the timing of his trade still fucking has the aura of Odell Beckham. Bro, if Cleveland tried to trade Odell right now, they would kiss the ground if they got a fucking second round pick. <laughs> I, I like got- this. See, I, wow. I, I, like, I like this, Josh. See, like, I, I, right now I'm picturing this. Like, you guys to me are like this. It's like John's on uh, one side of my shoulder. Jules is on the other. Like, the angel of <laughs> the devil. And they're, like, giving me, like, different points of view. I'm like, okay, okay. I agree. Like Jules, you're the devil. Josh, you're the fucking uh, guy. You're the fucking angel over there, man. Shit. You know, you know, you know that I was definitely on that devil side. Like, I <laughs> well, I'm, man, I'm who, just who the hell knows what? Man, it's who the hell knows what's gonna happen, man. We'll see. Like maybe they come out and score eighty points, fucking Sunday afternoon at one o'clock. You know, who knows? Well, the only problem he's with wide receiver is- four. Traditionally, a wide receiver four was winning games consistently for his team. We we'll say that again. Ever, he's wide receiver four on this team. Yeah, but he's not even supposed to be. That's the that's the point. Why would he? Yes, he was. He was always supposed to be. How so? So, fucking... so wait. So who are you cutting off then? So that means Ross isn't. Tony's not. Those guys that we brought in aren't. Sills. No, he just stepped the fuck up and he's outperforming everybody so far in preseason. And I Ooh. get it. You Sills, we're talking about, yeah. I'm talking. I'll, I'll talk about Tony. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, I'm just saying he's our fourth wide receiver, right? Like, best case scenario, like that's what he is. When was the last time a wide receiver four was instrumental to the team's success? It's weird because he's our number one pick, and he should be on yes. the field. He should be taking the number two spot. He should be taking that. Right. Would be a first but round, 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 sure round pick. He should be. Have. I, like, I see that point too. I see that point too, John. We're like, we got the guys that could like hold down the fort, but this is supposed to be a dynamic wide receiver that has the capabilities of changing the game, like a Tyreek Hill. Like I wasn't kidding with that speed and like the way they could utilize him. It's it's a different animal in the NFL. You need him on the fucking field. Like, yeah, I got I got to see that motherfucker. Want, 
him on the field. Yeah. Just like, the same way you want to rip a Ferrari through the fucking Catskill Mountains. Like, I get it. But it's not a need. We have five very, very good to Hall of Fame caliber offensive weapons. And then Tony. Right? Shepard's not going to the Hall of Fame. Saquon might. Well, let, let's no, compare. Let's excellent. make a quick comparison to, to our rivals then with the Cowboys, right? When they went okay. out and got CeeDee Lamb, did they really need CeeDee Lamb? No. Right? They had Blake Jarwin, who was a serviceable tight end. They had Ezekiel Elliott. Michael Gallup was coming off of a great fucking season. And they just signed Amari Cooper to a big fucking deal. And Amari Cooper had a great year. So yeah. now you bring yeah. in CeeDee Lamb. Where did he go? CeeDee Lamb went from being wide receiver three, four to wide receiver two to the point right now where they're saying he might be better than fucking Cooper. Yeah, That's what you want from a first round pick that high. You don't want right. this fucking kid to have to be we a fucking, fourth fucking guy, string though. receiver and he's fucking and he's a special teams only? Bro, CD Lamb's making that kid look like shit, dude. I don't Listen, like right. that on my rival type teams. I, I, I don't want to be Jalen Rieger either though. That's why I brought him up earlier. Because you got to get nervous and start to think that, like what they did with Rieger, which was hilarious because the Viking fans will love them forever because they had Justin Jefferson. So, yo, there's always going to be that comparison. And a lot of guys went, Rondell Moore, he looked good on Arizona last week. These are guys that went after Tony that I was shouting about that we could have taken. I would say Bateman was having a great preseason at camp till he got hurt, but he'll be back, they said, by, by September at some point like that. But at least the kid was doing shit. You know what I'm saying? And and, and, uh, no, Mar- and no, Mar- no, Matthews Jr. is another two one, weeks. man. Yeah, it's but like two, they, weeks. But two weeks, OTAs, all this other shit. There was camps. There was things that went it on. And Tony's been dick, nothing bro. but negative. It means dick. It doesn't I mean see. fucking I hope anything. So. I hope so, man. It doesn't when that anything. dude comes on the field and he's lost and he goes to take a screen pass and he runs and it the wrong way. He's never going to be on the field. If he's, <laughs> if he's lost, he's never going to be on the field. It's irrelevant. Man's going to run the wrong way. Yeah, I mean, he's gonna run left instead of going straight. You know what I mean? Oh, he's like, oh, where should I have been? Yeah, uh, I was supposed to light up over here. I didn't know my blocking was going this way. I didn't know. Well, hopefully he's fucking studying and he don't fuck up that way. Then, then I'll be pretty pissed. But yeah, let's let's give him the benefit of the doubt. We're only like we still got like a few more weeks and shit before the fucking actual games start to mean anything. So I think well, we'll we, we have two more matter. preseason games. Two right. more. Two more. And Let's keep that in matter. mind. Two Even more preseason after, uh, games. Uh, we play the Browns, uh, and, and generally speaking, if I'm not mistaken, like almost no starters usually play in this because it's the, it's before the big cut. So they're literally trying to get like down to that 50, 55 man roster. So a lot of people are going to see this week is not. So that Same literally man. brings us two weeks out, and that's it. And that's going to be the dress rehearsal. And at this point in time, we're not ready to go. So we're going to have to take some big strides in the next two weeks for me to feel comfortable saying that we're going to smack Denver. Because right now, huh, we I, I don't know who we could be right now. Be honest with you. We're not ready. We're not ready. And thankfully, we, we have about a month ago. All right. I'm done ready, with this podcast. Bro. We're not ready. Yeah, guys. We're not ready, I'm guys. Done. I'm telling you right now. We're not ready. What do you mean? That could change in the next couple mean? of weeks. But we're not. The team that I saw out there and the demeanor and the way things oh, are going yeah. and the, the players that are missing, we're not ready. We are not yeah, This ready is giant Twitter come to life. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, yo, listen, it, it is and it's not. To me right now. I mean, We're look, ready. look, why? All of a sudden, the Browns, the Browns should be almost a touchdown favorite over the Giants. I grant it's preseason. They're right. not even going to play Nick Chubb. They're not even going to play fucking Kareem Hunt, probably. Like, yo, dude, like, you, like we need to see guys get healthy. And it's got to be sooner than later. I can't have everybody trying to play week one when they haven't done shit for a month. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, they're going to be rusty. They ain't going to be in sync. Like, the, the timing's going to be off, man. Like, you need to see more shit. Now, was that encouraging to hear that he hit all those receivers in practice today? Absolutely. That's encouraging. But again, you said it. If Tony's off fourth, he was hitting off the fucking wide receiver five, who's not even going to touch the field. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, where's Rudolph? We go out, we sign fucking old man Rudolph, and he ain't even on the fucking field. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, these are things that, like, you got to start to put this together or else it's going to take us a month to get Drew, going. All you're doing is focusing on the negative, dude. So give me some more positives. Fucking line. We have, we have two of the best corners in fucking football as our, as our outside cornerbacks. Daniel Jones looks good in fucking camp. Like our offensive line is, is shaping up. We have an offensive tackle who's actually going to fucking play good for the first time in a goddamn decade. 
Saquon Barkley's fucking coming back. Evan Ain't Ingram a devil. is not dropping fucking passes. <laughs> Ain't you a devil, man. Ain't you a devil. Jules warned us he was going to be on another level I, fucking tonight. I definitely put it out there today. So you knew when the show started. This is the way I was feeling right sport. now. It's all meaningless shit. Next week, we're going to have a fucking – this whole week, Thursday, Friday, and then when they have the game on Sunday, we're going to be getting highlights of the fucking team. You're going to get excited. I don't know why your dick has to wiggle in fucking August. I want the shit to go fucking in September. That's when it fucking matters. Right now, to get worked up like this is just bonkers. Bro. It's, just been, it's been too many years, and you just wanted to see a little bit better play. Look, let's say Pert doesn't get beat off the end, right? On that third and out. We don't go three and out, right? Like, hey, we don't have to score, but we just moved a little, a little bit better. The offense looked like there was some kind of clicking. That line was really playing together. You feel a little bit more at ease. Cool. But Jules, 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 you were going after Kyle Rudolph tonight. My man's like old. He's like, he can't yeah, even like bro. defend himself, like, man. He's probably like, he's probably got dementia. He's probably like in Minnesota camp still. Like, it's like, you like, <laughs> dude, you don't belong here. Like, get out of here. Right. You remember in 2019 when we were the preseason champs for now? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Of course. No, I don't need that. And won I hated night. that actually because I think there's some ridiculous stat. Now, like when when any team goes like undefeated like that, they end up like with with a top ten. I hate pick. that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it's some ridiculous stat like that. So I oh, with you on that. Okay, so the preseason doesn't matter, is what you're saying? <laughs> but, but again, you see, like maybe because they kept winning, you were missing these kind of key issues, right? So as soon as Not an L goes up on that record, you start to pay attention, and, and you know what? Like I said, it was just it was the feel I got watching that first couple of snaps where I said, "Oh my god." We're literally right back to where we were last year. There's no difference. Like, Did I don't see it. I don't feel it. After? Huh? Did you watch the snaps that came after that? But it was, it, the vibe was set and we didn't score for fucking three quarters. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, so it doesn't matter what happened. Though. Like, those things did actually take place. Those are facts. Right, we went scores again. Not, I, I'm looking at Garrett trying, trying to come up with plays. That. That's and he's looking at his shit, and all I keep hearing in my head are all the fucking haters going, "We need to fire Garrett. He he's fucking running an offense from 1992 and shit." That's like, you. That's all I kept hearing in my head because, like, you don't see anything different at that point in time. Is where you got to put like no, a trick play. One of the preseason. Oh, but but week two is gonna be shit too. Watch. How do you see? know? Now you're just fucking bullshit. I'm predicting the future here. All right, guys, ready? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to throw out a fucking score. It's a five and a half point spread. I think the Browns cover that shit easily. All right? <laughs> easily. I say I say 20 to 10 is what you're going to see on Sunday afternoon. All right? 20 to 10, and I'm being okay. generous because so, right, I think one of the well, running backs the breaks it off. <laughs> let's set the stage. Joe Judge said that he was going to use the first game of the preseason as a, like, basically game four of the preseason in normal right. circumstances. Right, it's because he wants to. He wanted to get a really good handle on the back of the end, the back of the roster guys. Wanted to get them a lot of snaps, weed out who they had to weed out. Okay, week two of the preseason this year is going to be like week two of the preseason in normal normal times. You're going to get the starters start ramping up, having a couple of drives each on both sides of the ball. You're going to see James Badbury and Dory Jackson and Jabril Peppers playing week this this weekend and fucking against Cleveland. You're going to see them play for probably two drives, maybe three drives. And then next week, you're going to see them play a whole half and then maybe a drive going into the second half. All the starters. Well, they should get the whole first half. Yeah, definitely. We'll see that. I mean, that New England game is going to be the dress rehearsal. But it's like one of those things where it's like, if, if, if you want to talk dress rehearsals, right, and you've been watching them like audition and practice and shit, right? Like, like if, if they were getting ready for this big Broadway type play. Man, so far this shit sucks, and I don't want any critics there opening night. <laughs> I ho- hopefully our listeners enjoyed Stephen A. Jules this week. <laughs> Holy shit. I don't know what, to, what sucks, though. I feel like the receivers are making plays. Shepard supposedly looks like a beast. Sills looks great. Fucking um, Ingram is not dropping a pass. Barkley looks fast as fuck for the plays that you do see him whenever, whenever, he's, whenever you can catch a glimpse of him on the field. There's been fun shit to watch. I don't, I don't, I don't understand what we're what we're looking for here. It was, it was when we got on the field and we played against another team that everything just looked <laughs> yeah, like but, dirt. All right, like if, you dirt. if you were, if you would have like bring me back to the blue white scrimmages. All right, if you were, if you were to catalog the 140 somewhat snaps that took place during that game, 90 percent of it were from guys who aren't going to be on the team. 
So, so the guys that were in camp for the Jets versus our guys are better. That's what we got. No, we got to no, face. No, they played their and, starters, and it's still the bro. fucking Jets. No, now we they could score more starters. than one touchdown against the Jets. Oh Jesus Christ! I Clay, can't stand the Jets people, with this shit. Like, it's the Jets. Not people, we we didn't we didn't play Tampa. It wasn't a, it wasn't a preseason game against Tampa where they had a great defense or, or one of these other teams. It was the Jets. We lost 12-7. I okay. wanted to shoot myself. Like, All come right. on, bro. That's high school shit. I, high school puts up more points. Are you done now? Yep. <laughs> okay. So if the Pittsburgh Pirates played the MLB team, played what's the best? The Dodgers are the best team in baseball right now? Arguably Tampa, but go ahead. Whichever. Okay. Right. Let's just say this. You took the AAA squads of both of those two teams – Combine them to play a seven-game series against the Pirates. Who's going to win? A seven-game no, Let's say they show up for the one game and then fucking preseason. Listen, and a triple A team question, bro. out half the fucking lineup. Like, yo, that's what I feel like. That's what I watched on Saturday, all right? Jewel. <laughs> Kid was mowing them down, bro. Seven-game like, series. Metal, sit down. <laughs> the fantasy fucking series of the world, all right? You have to put a fucking mortgage payment on the winner. Seven-game series. The Pittsburgh Pirates of today, or one of those two teams, if you want to combine the AAA rosters, whatever the fuck you want to do, seven game series, who's winning that series? The Probably actual Pittsburgh. MLB players or the or the or the third the, the uh, I mean, all right. And that's really there over seven games is Pittsburgh, but it's gonna go oh, through okay. games. <laughs> it's gonna go okay, yeah, because it might get lucky. Where baseball works. This is the same <laughs> thing with this fucking game, bro. You had the starters for the Jets playing against the backups for the Giants. For the majority like, of the not, game. For the majority of it, yes. No, well, for, for, the, for the time that, the, that the, the Jets were on the field, they had their two or three drives with their starters, whatever it was, and we had one or two drives with our starters, but it was only – with none – no, no, no. Jets had more the offensive line. Field. It was offensive line for two drives, and then um, Julian Love and uh, Tay Crowder or Carter Coughlin – Whoever and Ojolari, yeah, Ojolari. Who's Ojolari is a rookie, so you don't really can't really count him. You're like he's gonna, you got. He's I, gonna I think he's done everything he can to win that that outside linebacker job, right? Now. Right, and the fact that we have some injuries, it is what it is. So you're talking about literally 90 percent of the guys on the field for those two drives against the starters are, are going to be second stringers, third stringers, or off the team entirely. Like and, I said, that's I, not a fair fight. So to judge the judge the the season for the starters who were on the on the bench playing cheerleader today or on Saturday, what they're gonna do against live competition? You, how are you gonna judge it off of? It doesn't make any sense. That's like my little brother getting into a fight and then saying, "No, you can't fight because your little brother can't fight." <laughs> no. yeah. Does Daniel that's, Jones that's play really, Sunday? Does Daniel right. Jones play Sunday? He is playing Sunday. Yeah. Shepard's yeah. playing. The starters are going to play a drive or two on Sunday. Yes. Jets, right. The Jets just all played right. their starters more than us. That's all it came down to, really. If you look at the game, they played they played their starters a lot more time than us. So, and like, you listen, didn't see Bradbury, and they you won't didn't by see three. You didn't see Ryan. You didn't. Re- you saw McKinney a little bit. I forgot about him. You didn't yeah. see Adoree Jackson. You didn't see Blake Martinez, Leo Dex. Yeah. You oh. saw Shelton for like two plays. Oh, no, listen, I got nothing. Yo, if you guys realize, I got nothing negative to say about the defense. <laughs> I, I think yeah, we I got a very good defense, and I think it's going to surprise a lot of fucking people. I love the defense. It's the offense. I don't want to be the 2000 Ravens. We're like, you know, yeah, we, we got to be like Daniel Jones becomes a game manager, there. and we're winning fucking games, you know, 12 to 6. Like, I don't need to see that. <laughs> no. Sandro looked good. Corey Clement looked good, except for he fumbled the ball. Yeah. He didn't fumble the, the ball, man. So that that could have been, yeah. been right there. He doesn't fumble that ball there. Then well, he, he might be. He might be the number two. Down. He might take over the number two, RB two right. man. Like, he was looking really good. Well, that's I know. The difference between oh, him and Booker. Shit. Booker oh. may not be as explosive of a player, but he dots his eyes and crosses his teeth. Yes, I agree. Which Which don't Clement's going to have a little bit more explosion, but a little bit more of. He, you know, he's a very he's a very team. underrated uh, pass blocker as well, Booker T. You know what I'm right. saying? So, so like you know, like, that's the reason why he's there. Yeah, you're going to have both of those two guys there, which which is fine. You want to have a couple of different running backs on the field. Absolutely. Uh, to, to spell Saquon, you want to be able to change and be able to throw, you know, the, the fucking jab and the cross. Not just now listen. Fucking... I I definitely think that if there was a you know Saquon to miss a game or two, right, just some crazy shit, which is a possibility. You never know. 
uh, that it would be a full committee between him and Clement until Clement fucks up again. And then and Sandro, you know, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. He could get in there. I could see him working in for sure. The, Aust- the Austrian assassin, bro. Yeah. I could definitely see him working in. He looked fucking pretty good, man. Look at the you know, life there. We got guys. We got guys. Don't worry about it. Let's, yeah, let's, that's what I'm saying. So, let's look so, forward so to this Sunday. This Sunday, this Sunday, in those two drives, we got to score. Is that agreed? We got to yes. score. I can't, I can't have good. those two drives being scored. You don't have to you don't have to do this. You don't have to do that. I don't oh, care. Man. They're going to be running vanilla offenses, bro. They're not looking to fucking pull fucking tricks out of their bag in, in a preseason game. They want to fucking get the basics down. They're using this as a warm-up for the season. I get right. that too, but you know, it's in a basic, really a touchdown. <laughs> that's yeah. how you, that's kind of football basics right there. You know? like, yeah, you, you, you yeah, do want to score. Legend, you, yeah. you know, you might be running your more <laughs> like basic plays that everyone knows that you have, but at the end of the day, you want to be able to execute those plays. Right. You're not going to stop. Go them. Gotta fucking like, stop. You know. I want us to I agree. Down I'm not saying that it doesn't matter. I, I mean, it does, it doesn't matter if they score or they don't. There's no bearing on the season. I get you want to see it, but. You want to see them drive the ball. You want to see them not make mistake, make mistakes. You want to see them communicate. You want to see them play as a team. That's it. Play better than what they played fucking last week. I think we could all agree on that. Thank you. That 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 I sure. definitely have to agree on. And, and I hope that I'm not sleeping by like one forty five. <laughs> it starts at one o'clock so make sure you get up a little early pregame it's like a one o'clock game on a sunday it's normal it's, it's hours so yeah it's yeah. a sunday sunday game at one o'clock. Hey, this this week is, is a normal one in cleveland yeah. i guess it's because we had the joint practice so that they're making this kind of play towards like the very very end of the week uh, there's even a monday wow. night game this week yeah, there's a even a Monday night, night Saints and Jaguars. Like, like they're just like making it like a regular schedule type fucking season here. They can't turn down that money, Jules. And it's yeah, no doubt, money, man. That's what that's they, they, they're they trying to try to capitalize with a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday fucking type of week coming up. So, Real. yes, plenty right. of football to watch. You know, hopefully, we see a little bit more of improvements on this Giants offense, right? I, I before before we wrap it up, though, fellas. You want to give any kind of predictions on this game, like like realistically, like nothing. Like, I have a favor. Know. What's up? <laughs> I have a favor to ask of you. All right, all right. So the enthusiasm, we'll call it, that you brought today. Yep. The enthusiasm. The energy. The energy. Should, <laughs> the energy that you brought today to this show. If the Giants do go out and they do play two or three drives, put 10, 14 points on the board. Will you come back? Match the energy positively. Come to have the bright ever, side. Have you ever met Jules, John? <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking for the favor, though. I'm not asking what he's going to do with his own volition. I'm asking for the favor. Yo, like, the energy might start on Sunday. Are you kidding me? Like, like you'll start seeing tweets and fucking Facebook postings and everything going like crazy. And they, imagine, like, like, give me this kind of scenario real quick. If I was this fucking pumped up and this fucking motivated and this much energy, right? Imagine they score on those two drives that they have the ball. And they put up 10 points with the first offense. Man, you fucking kidding yeah, you're me. You're probably going to jerk off right in the bar. I got it. I might. I might. I might have to post it. The text, the text, John. We'll get the text messages. So we'll fucking, we'll hear it. We'll fucking hear it. Oh you know, like I'm going to be glued to that set. I get to see Dale Jones making sure you it. Too. Fuck yeah. Hey, my, pre- I, my prediction is like I'll be drunk and I don't give a fuck. Just, just like, <laughs> just, just fucking, just let's start the season ready. Shit, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm almost like that, but like I realized that we need a couple more dress rehearsals before we can start the season. So <laughs> I'm off. glad we, I'm glad that we are only done with our first preseason game, and now we still have two more. There's still at least three more episodes before this first game of the year, right? So, so we definitely have a lot. But like I said before, I just didn't like what I saw as far as a dress rehearsal is concerned and, and, and going out there. You know what? This week, though, we have joint practices. We have, you know, the starters playing at least a series or two. That's all I can fucking ask for in regards to saying them being on the field and then hopefully them executing on some nice plays. Right. You know, I don't need to see that offense come out and go three and out like, you know, it, they need. I just want to see them move the ball a little bit put up some points, look positive. Daniel Jones looking sharp, not making any bad throws or, or decisions, you know, and, and, and I'll be okay with that, all right? And, and that's that's really all I'm masking out of this Cleveland game. And that offensive line playing a little better. Hopefully Lemieux can get on the field. Any news on him? Is he going to is he gonna be able to go on Sunday, guys? Hope so. All right. Mm-hmm. So we'll, we'll keep fingers crossed. Hopefully Lemieux can get out, get out on the field. But uh, you know what? 
this is a very entertaining and energized type of a, of a podcast after a week one preseason. For you. Wait, wait until we get closer to the fucking regular season, all right? That's all I got to say. And you know to come at us on Twitter at the BBONYG podcast. You can hit us up individually. I guess I'm going to go first with that one because hit me at JulesNYC1 because I talk a lot of shit and I, talk, and I went crazy on this one. So it might be one or two of you out there on Twitter that were like, wait a minute, you were saying the opposite a week ago. I don't no, if not, you can hit Mike Chain up at Mike Chain MFT. You get John up at NYG Slap Parade. Don't forget, we are also on Facebook and everywhere that you listen to podcasts. So drop a like, hit us up, man. We love hearing from you. But we're out until next week when we come back and we see how I feel after the fucking Cleveland game. See you guys later. Peace. <laughs>